Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the very mysterious black hole collision that was detected last year that sort of raised a lot of questions about what was possible and what was not possible. As a matter of fact, when this black hole collision was originally detected, not only did it represent the most massive black hole collision ever found, but the scientists also started referring to this as the impossible black hole collision, or the impossible black hole, because of one of these black holes' masses. It was just a little bit too massive to potentially exist, and sort of represents what the scientists refer to as the mass gap. A mass of a black hole that the scientists do not know how to explain. It cannot be produced during a supernova, mostly because a typical supernova will never produce black holes this massive. And it could also not really be produced from a typical collapse of a star either. A massive star like this in order to produce a black hole, would actually have to undergo something extremely unusual, and it would be extremely rare as well. And so since then, a lot of different papers try to potentially solve this, and try to explain how any of this would be possible. Oh, and the other reason why this particular black hole collision was extremely interesting was because of what it produced. It produced the first confirmed intermediate mass black hole, a black hole that was approximately 142 masses of the Sun, and basically solved the mystery of the existence of these black holes. Up until a few years ago, no intermediate black hole has ever been found. But in the last few years, quite a lot of them have been identified using various methods, so today we know that they definitely exist, and the scientists have already discovered some of the potential ways in which they are created. But for this particular study, or for this particular investigation, the bigger question was how exactly these relatively massive original black holes were created. If one of them had the mass of approximately 85 masses of the Sun, and the other one was approximately 66 masses of the Sun, this already implied that something dramatic must have happened to create these black holes, and if these two dramatic black holes then also collided creating something even more dramatic, none of this statistically made sense. Mostly because, well, we just started looking for black holes not so long ago, back in 2015, and we've already found something extremely unlikely. So statistically, it just doesn't add up. This had to have some sort of a rational explanation, something that seems to be pretty common in the universe. Now, one of the potential explanations we've discussed in one of the previous videos, that you can also find somewhere right there or in the description below, is in regards to, well, the expansion of the universe. One of the potential propositions here was that, in reality, these black holes were not as massive. But because they're really far away from us, and because as the universe expands, there's a chance that the black holes will actually change as well, the study here implied that these black holes grew in mass because of the expansion. Theoretically and mathematically, it sort of makes sense, but there's really no way to prove any of this. And obviously, not everyone was happy with this explanation. Several other explanations were proposed, with one suggesting what's known as the late star merger. Essentially, two really massive stars merged into a relatively massive black hole. Which means that all of this must have been happening in some sort of a really highly populated region with a lot of different stars and a lot of possibilities for those stars to merge without exploding. And this idea is not impossible. As a matter of fact, the nearby Large Magellanic Cloud contains what's known as the Tarantula Nebula, which contains this region known as R136. This is where we find some of the most massive, most luminous, and hottest stars nearby. And as you can see here, there are quite a lot of stars packed in a relatively small region. And some of these stars are hundreds masses of the Sun in mass. And if two stars of this mass collide, there is a chance they might produce a relatively massive black hole as a result. But because this has never been observed before, it's obviously kind of difficult to see if this is what happened here. But there was always another explanation, and this explanation is what most scientists believe might have happened. This is known as the hierarchical explanation or the multiple merger scenario. Here we have a bunch of black holes colliding one after another, eventually producing more and more mass, and eventually creating something like this. But here the obvious problem is how do you prove this, and the other problem is where exactly would we find so many black holes all at once all being able to collide and produce more massive black holes. And it looks like that first part of how you can actually prove this might have been finally proven in this recent study. The study that, as always, you can find in the description below. And it's actually two studies, because in the second study the scientists have also used these observations to then confirm the value for the mysterious Hubble constant. In case you're curious, the value stands at 68.8 kilometers per second per megaparsec. 
But that's not really the point of this video. The point is the first study. The study that quite thoroughly explores and explains what most likely happened in this particular black hole collision. And so in order to try to prove the so-called multiple collision scenario, one way of looking at this is realizing that during multiple collisions, the initial orbits of that final collision would have to be a lot more eccentric or a lot more oval shape, as you can see right here, and not really circular, which is something you would expect from a black hole collision that's sort of been building up for a long time between two different black holes that have orbited for a long enough period. In other words, by looking at the eccentricity of these initial orbits, it becomes possible to prove if this was a multiple collision theory. And that's really simple to sort of understand. If this came from the idea of multiple black holes colliding, because of the gravitational interaction of these early black holes, the final orbit here is going to be quite eccentric. And mostly because as these black holes collide with one another, they're going to disturb each other's orbits and eventually have a very stretched eccentric orbit. In other words, the more eccentric the orbit, the more likely that this particular system experienced a lot of gravitational disturbances and a lot of different collisions. And because this particular collision was also associated with a somewhat bright explosion or some kind of a bright event, this further helped the scientists narrow down where all this might be happening. More about this in a few seconds. First, let's talk about the original discovery and how the scientists were able to rework some of this. So some of the original findings here suggested that these two black holes were approximately 17 billion light years away from us, and even though they produced a final black hole of approximately 142 masses of the Sun, they did emit approximately 9 masses of the Sun in gravitational energy, which is essentially how we were able to see it from planet Earth. In other words, these final moments of gravitational collision right here produce approximately 9 masses of the Sun worth of gravitational energy, creating these ridiculously powerful ripples that would technically rip anything apart. And here the scientists behind this paper decided to create supercomputer models. And so to figure this out, the scientists relied on supercomputer simulations and decided to produce hundreds of different models, 611 models to be more exact. In other words, they decided to create various types of collisions using different types of eccentricity, different types of mass and so on and then find out which of these would match the best with actual observations coming from LIGO. And they've been doing this for over a year now since the original discovery. In the process, finding at least one scenario that seemed to match the best. With the scenario in this case suggesting that first of all, these original black holes were probably even more massive than originally believed, meaning that they were all in that mass gap. And at the same time, the eccentricity here was probably around 70% which is slightly more eccentric than this orange-yellow ring you see right here. But the paper suggested that both of the black holes were possibly around 100 to maybe 102 masses of the Sun in mass, suggesting that even the original value for these two original black holes was probably more in the range of 100 to 102 masses of the Sun, more massive than originally predicted. But naturally, because of the eccentricity, the implication here is that these black holes were created from previous collisions of smaller black holes. And this is what we refer to as the multiple collision scenario. At the same time, because of that flash detected along with this particular collision, currently the best explanation here suggests that the flash was produced when the final black hole essentially got such a huge kick from the event that it sort of passed through the accretion disk of the nearby supermassive black hole, implying of course that all of this was happening in the center of some sort of a galaxy that has a massive black hole and an accretion disk nearby. Now all this right now theoretically makes total sense. We do expect a lot of black holes in this region and a lot of these black holes as they orbit around the central black hole are probably going to be combining growing larger and larger in size sort of similar to, I guess, how planets grow in size as they orbit around a typical star system. But that's for now, I guess, the best explanation. The explanation doesn't involve any unusual physics or any unusual scenarios. But chances are, as the time goes on, scientists might discover something else about these collisions and about these particular black holes that might have us come back and talk a little bit more about this as the new discoveries are made. For now, though, I think it's a pretty good explanation and it sort of settles the mystery once and for all. And if you'd like to read more about the actual detection and what the scientists know about it so far, check out the links in the description below. Well, for now at least, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. 
maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the one full person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.